hey, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, sometimes you just get doing this stuff and you don't think about everything that you probably should have shared with people along the way. I'm at it again, guys, cleaning up another intake runner using my pneumatic air tool, my long shank tapered carbide burr here. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier, guys, is that when doing this, the cast iron particularly, though the same uh, is the case and helpful for aluminium cylinder heads, is it's really helpful for your carbide cutter uh, cutter, should I say, and to prolong its life, to use a bit of cutting fluid. Now, I'm not using specifically a cutting fluid per se, okay? This is what I'm talking about. Grabbing yourself a tin of WD-40 or something very, a cheaper version, you know, just a kerosene fish oil. This is just a really cheap sort of Chinese ripoff of WD-40. Use that, guys, to coat your runners, okay? And what that will do, it will just really help Along uh, the sharpness in your carbide, won't blunt as easy, makes it smoother when you're working the carbide. <laughs> Cuts down the chatter with the carbide because it's not sort of grabbing and gripping as much, so it's much smoother, easier for you to manipulate the carbide, and um, it keeps the dust and chips down. I mean, I'm not talking about having it like, you know, pouring out of the stuff, but you can give it a, a good generous coat of WD-40 or an equivalent if you can get a cheaper brand. And that's a really good idea, guys. It just keeps this cooler and it will prolong the life of your carbide quite substantially, especially if you're not using sort of, you know, well, whether you're using cheap carbides or really expensive carbides, either way, uh, it's really going to help prolong their life. I would highly recommend doing that. The other important thing too, guys, is to make sure you've got a decent light. What I've got set up, let me see if I can just manipulate the camera. I've set up an LED light that I've just set up to hang. <laughs> it's a bit dodgy out of my ceiling, but it works. And uh, I just hang that straight over my cylinder head. And then I can manipulate my cylinder head. So then the port that I'm working on is picking up a reasonable amount of light. Okay, that's really handy to be able to see what you're doing. Um, you can see these other ones, they're not, the light's not quite as good in them because it's, they're not lined up exactly with, with the LED above. So something like that works quite well. You want some kind of light in your ports so then you can see what you're doing. As far as technique goes and running the carbide, that can be penned, okay? You can, you can do nice slow sort of uh, strokes with the carbide. And again, this all comes down to what you're using, being a tapered sort of narrower carbide. These are very handy for getting in next to those valve guide bosses, okay? And they have, because they've got a longer taper on them, they've got a little bit more area that you can work with. Obviously, you've got to angle your shank, okay, to pick up the entire length of your carbide. I generally move my carbide pretty quickly, okay? As you can see, that sort of motion is, is how I use it. Depends on where I am in the port and what I'm working on as to whether I'd, I'd, I'd do quite fast sweeping movements or whether I'd sort of use a slower sort of groove technique. When I come around the um, entry here into the intake, I'll take it a little bit slower so I don't end up sort of flogging out here and, and grinding across the face of my uh, uh, intake here. So I'll go a little bit slower here. I won't go as, as mad. I'll get a little bit more of a smooth action around here. Then when I go back into the ports, I'll move a little bit faster. I'm not trying to hunker out material, remember, we're not doing that. All we're doing is smoothing the runners of any of the sharp castings and any of the burrs. And you'd be surprised at uh, the, the job. This does a really good job um, just on the cutter. And there's so much talk out there on the internet about um, using carbides and only using them versus using sandpaper, um, cartridges and stuff like that. We're gonna talk about that next because I've actually ordered some uh, sandpaper cartridges from a supplier here in Australia because I want to give them a try. Um, and I'm going to um, do a video of me uh, talking about those cartridges, using those cartridges. It'll be when they turn up. I've only ordered them uh, on Friday. It's Sunday now. He's posted them on Friday, so they'll come probably midweek next week. I'll run a video on using those, particularly uh, in the chambers, and some intake and exhaust. But uh, anyway, we'll talk about that. There's a lot of argument about how much you should actually do with sand, with, with um, sanding. You don't want to polish the intakes or whatever. 
one person says one thing, another person says another. That's uh, what you're dealing with with that sort of stuff. But I'm going to give them a go anyway, a coarse grip. But anyway, I want to show you some uh, pictures now uh, that a friend of mine sent me um, on Facebook. I haven't heard from him for a while. He contacted me back a couple of years ago when I was starting to post some pictures of my other set of heads that I ported because he was porting a set of these 302s and he used um, some sandpaper cartridges tapered and straight to do his intakes and to also help finish off um, the tapers and the points on his uh, valve guide bosses both in the exhaust and in the intake. I'm going to show you some of his photos. He did a fantastic job um, and it'll show you what uh, you can get, what sort of finish you can get if you end up using sandpaper roll cartridges to do uh, your cylinder head rather than just a carbide cutter. So obviously the carbide cutter, it still keeps a pretty rough surface. It smooths the really rough casting off and it certainly takes care of any abnormalities, any large burrs and stuff, which uh, I showed an example of uh, in one of the earlier videos, part three, part two or part three. One of those, uh, you definitely want to be getting rid of all of that chunky burrs, but they still leave a reasonable rough uh, runner um, with the carboy. And some people say that is how it has to be left. Otherwise you can have issues with uh, fuel droplets, not uh, getting suspended, losing velocity. I don't know, I, 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 I've never done this when the engine's been running to see, to see what the fuel droplets are doing. So I, I can't comment from personal experience. Okay, let's have a look at my friend Tim's porting job that he did on his uh, 2V302 cylinder heads a couple of years ago. And as you can see, guys, these have got a really high finish. And he's finished his porting off with sandpaper cartridges. Okay, now, is this too smooth? Is it too shiny? I don't know, because I'm not sure what grits he used. And... I'm sure Tim will get back to me and let me know. As you can see here in the intake runners, he's done a fantastic job on really getting those valve guide bosses thinned down. And you can see there on the intake runner that it is quite rough. It's not like super smooth and polished. So, you know, I think that's a pretty good finish. I'll let Tim get back to me on the grit that he used on his sandpaper cartridges to finish. He did most of the work with a carbide burr first. Then he finished with sandpaper cartridges and I think that's good you know that's a good finish I don't think you're going to see um, fuel droplets getting stuck on the intake runners like they talk about uh, happening if you have too polished to finish on your intakes that looks like it's still pretty rough to me and will do the job and here on the subject guys is some sandpaper cartridges for cylinder head porting. Now this is from a fellow who uh, hails out of South Australia. His name is Marvin and his eBay site is called Marvin's Classic Iron. Now he sells quality sandpaper cartridges for cylinder head porting. And I'd looked at quite a few different places to get cartridges for cylinder head porting and most of the stuff I was looking at was in the US through Eastwoods and other companies over there and it's quite expensive by the time you buy some of their kits and ship them to Australia so his stuff is very reasonably priced especially when it is very very good quality um, this kit cost me $79 and that's going to be more than enough for my needs for what I'm doing on this set of heads that kit comes with a six inch mandrel and a three inch mandrel and I'll include a link in the description to Marvin's Classic Iron so then you can uh, grab some of this stuff if you're in Australia it's going to be very handy because he's in Australia but surely if you can't find anything on par even if you're in America well look the exchange rate favours Americans to the Australian dollar so it wouldn't be a bad idea to also uh, purchase some of this stuff stuff off Marty. He assures me that his stock is for all from quality manufacturers such as SA, 3M, Norton, Arc, United Abrasives, etc. And all of his stock, guys, is made in either North America or Europe. You can get uh, stuff from uh, 120 to 180 grit. He has coarse uh, cartridges, 60 and 80 grit uh, for his standard. These are all in his standard kits. Um, in 3.8 by 1 inch or half inch uh, by 1.5 inch rolls. He also has many other various grits, compounds and sizes as you would see in his store. So check out his store and uh, you can make up your mind yourself if you want to 
finish your head porting uh, with a sandpaper finish or whether you just want to do it off your carbide. I'm going to be running sandpaper cartridges as my finish and Marty's been very generous in including in my kit some 100 grit tapered cartridges so then I can get more of the finish I'm after. I want a rough, rough texture finish um, is my preference and I'm hoping that the 100 grit will do that. In any case guys it's going to be uh, shown in a video his uh, cylinder head porting cartridges. I'll use the 100 grit, I'll use some of the other grits and we'll have a look and see uh, what probably is a better finish on the 302 cylinder heads uh, when we get to that anyway. Well, uh, I hope this has been informative and helpful to you, this video. And guys, until I see you in the next video, you guys stay safe, stay healthy and take it easy out there.